Chapter 2, Section 3, Conditional Statements. These are going to be if-then statements. Um, for example, we talked about yesterday the, the stove example in class, or we talked today in class, excuse me, where if the stove is on and I put my hand on it, then my hand will burn. If-then conditional statements. They're, <coughs> pardon me, they're going to be written using P and Q. P will always come first, uh, just alphabetical order wise. And so P is the hypothesis. Hypothesis for all of the uh, science people is the educated guess. Uh, with some information, I can make a statement. The Q, uh, let me put in uh, parentheses, this is also the if statement. The Q is the conclusion. Okay, Q is the conclusion, and it is the then statement. Okay, if and then then. So let's take a look at some examples. So here's our if then statement. If the forecast is rain, then I will take an umbrella. So what I want you to identify is the hypothesis. and the conclusion. So I will put it on pause. Go ahead and pause it yourself and go ahead and fill in those spaces. Which one's the hypothesis? Which one is the conclusion? And you need to write them out completely. Okay, the hypothesis is our if statement. So it's going to be if, if the forecast is rain, Then our conclusion is our action, what we're going to do, and that's our then statement. So then I will take an umbrella. Hypothesis, if the forecast is rain, and conclusion, then I will take an umbrella. Piece of cake. Okay, we're going to look at four different examples um, of related conditionals. We have talked about the conditional statement. The conditional statement is P and Q. And so now they're going to be identified when we put them in if then order. Let me get this on pin. It's going to be P sideways arrow Q. That's if P then Q. So technically the sideways arrow stands for then. This is a conditional statement. All right, just enough room in that. And so after our conditional statement, we have a converse statement. Okay, converse statement. The converse statement just changes the order. So then it's if Q, then P. So you'll get some examples today where they'll give you an ex um, they'll give you an example of a conditional statement, and then they'll want you to manipulate the words around to the converse statement. Wow, I am really good in spelling. Converse. I hope Mrs. Bundy isn't watching this. And so our next statement is going to be the inverse statement. And the inverse statement, let me write that first. Putting the E on the end of there. Okay. 
the inverse statement, we take the conditional and we negate it. If not P, then not Q. And then our final is the contrapositive. There we go. And the contrapositive just takes our converse and negates it. So conditional is just standard if P then Q. Converse, switch the order, if Q then P. Inverse negates the conditional statement, so not P, then not Q, and then contrapositive negates the converse, so not Q and, excuse me, if not Q, then not P. Let me get that pin out of there so you can see that good. So four different statements that we're learning. We're going to take a look at an example out of the book. Uh, go ahead and flip to page 109 if you've got your book on you. And question number 10 says, if x squared equals 16, if x squared equals 16, then x equals 4. Okay, if x squared equals 16, then x equals 4. So, this is going to be our hypothesis. This is going to be our conclusion. If P, then Q. So let's check out the truth values. All right. Is X squared equal to 16? Yes. Does that make the answer X equals 4? I'll give you a second to think about that. That is actually false because, and some of you are saying I'm wrong at this point, don't forget that I can also take negative squared, negative 4 squared, and make it 16. So the conclusion is not always x equals 4. It could be x equals negative 4, which makes it false. All right, that should about do it. Just about eight minutes. Chapter 2, Section 3, Conditional Statements.